The measure of who we are is what we do with what we have. A quote from Vince Lombardi. But how do you measure that? That's right, today we're talking about measurement. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello, and welcome to our very first edition of Shu Fu Keminacha. I'm your host, Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? You know, Fu, students don't realize just how important measuring is. True story, bro. If you want that good, consistent data in your lab results, you need to learn how to properly measure. All right, let's get started. Measurement, a lesson from the lab skills unit. So what is it? It's a number with a unit. It gives us quantitative information instead of qualitative information. Quantitative comes from the word quantity, which has to do with an amount or number. Qualitative comes from the word quality, which has to do with the characteristic of something. If you're using a measuring device, that's quantitative. If you're just observing it directly, that's qualitative. Most common measurements in chemistry. Mass, it's the amount of matter. It's typically measured in grams. Volume is the amount of space that matter occupies. It's measured in milliliters for liquids and centimeters cubed for solids. Temperature is the average kinetic energy measured in degrees Celsius. Do you know how to measure? You probably think that measuring is pretty easy, but let's find out. Let's take a look at this slide. Number one, the meter stick. There's a red object. We're gonna measure the length on this meter stick in centimeters. I want you to write right on the PowerPoint slide right now how long you think the red object is. Don't forget, it's a number with a unit. So Fu, what'd you get for the length of the red object? I got 2.9. Ooh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Two and nine tenths. That's not correct either, and you're also missing a unit. Uh, two and point nine centimeters. All right. Technically, this should probably be 2.90 centimeters. We're going to talk about why a little bit later. Let's try another one. Number two is the graduated cylinder. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the meniscus, which is the curve shape that the liquid in the graduated cylinder makes. You always want to read the bottom of the meniscus while looking at it at eye level. All right, so you're going to write this down also on your PowerPoint slide. What do you think the volume of the liquid is in milliliters? Okay, Fu, what did you get for this one? I got 97.5. That's actually the correct numerical value. You did forget your unit again. 97.5 milliliters. Nice job. Now what's interesting is that you got the meter stick wrong, but you got the graduated cylinder right. And what the problem here is, is consistency. Do you see how that meniscus is between those two lines? What'd you do? I just kind of estimated it. Exactly, but with the meter stick, you didn't actually estimate, because you saw what? It was right on the line to me. Right on the line, exactly. So the key here is that we have to be consistent. So do you know how to measure? So did you measure correctly both times? Looks like you did it. In other words, do you measure the same way every time? Again, looks like you did it. We're gonna try to eliminate that inconsistency as we move forward. Measuring rules. Number one, find two consecutively labeled numbers on the measuring device. Number two, count how many lines are between the two numbers. Number three, determine the number place that each line represents. And finally, number four, make your measurement and estimate one extra number place. One extra number place! Even if it seems exactly on the line. Let's return to our meter stick. We're gonna follow these rules now and see if we can get a consistent measurement. So we find the two consecutively labeled numbers. Let's look at two and three, which is the two numbers that the object is in between. And we see that that goes by the ones place. Now we wanna look at the little marks in between those. We see that there are 10 of them, 
which means that the smallest mark on the measuring device goes to the tenths place. Finally, we've got to estimate one extra digit past the tenths place. So since it looks like it's exactly on the line, we're going to make the measurement 2.90 centimeters. Maybe you estimate a little bit different and you say it's 2.91, but we did estimate that extra digit. Looking again at number two, the graduated cylinder, we see our two consecutively labeled numbers are 90 and 100. So there's a difference of 10 there. If we look at the lines in between them, we have 10 lines, which means each line represents the ones place. We're gonna estimate past the ones place to the tens place, which again, it's kind of easier because you already see that the meniscus is in between them, and that's why you naturally estimate it to the tens place in the first place. Certain and uncertain digits. The numbers that we read directly off the measuring device are called the certain digits. We are unsure of the estimated number since different people might estimate differently. This number is called the uncertain digit. You know, it's okay to have different estimated digits as the people around you. All right, we're gonna play a little game here. Which digit is uncertain? Let's look at ruler number one. I want you to take a look at it and I want you to write down on your PowerPoint slide which digit is uncertain. So Fu, taking a look at ruler number one, let's start with which di digits are certain. This is the world's worst ruler. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, I'm gonna say that the tens spot is the certain digit. Okay, so then which digit is uncertain that we would estimate? So I'm gonna go with the ones since it's one smaller than and it would be the estimated one in between there. Very good, so if you put an object on that ruler, we'd have to sort of estimate where it was on the ruler by the ones place. Very good. Let's take a look at ruler number two. Which digit is uncertain? Again, please write that down on your PowerPoint. Okay, Fu, on this ruler, it's looking a little better, right? That's a much better ruler. All right, so which digits were certain here? I'm gonna say the one spot is certain because I see a digit for every one whole number there. Sounds good. So which digit is uncertain then? It has to be the tenths, right? Because that's one spot beyond the ones? Exactly, very good. We would be estimating between the ones on this ruler, and so therefore we'd be estimating to the tenths place. All right, last ruler, ruler number three. Which digit is uncertain? Write that down. Okay, foo. A lot of little marks on this one, right? Yeah, a lot of they're little pretty marks. small. All right, so that smallest mark would be our certain digit, so what would you say? That smallest mark represents the tenths spot. Excellent. So, even though it's so small and so hard to estimate, what would be the uncertain digit? Oh boy, so one smaller than the tenths has to be the hundredths, right? So I would say the uncertain digit is the hundredths spot. You got it, very good. Again, it's such a tiny little mark, but when we are measuring the length of an object, whether it's on the line or in between the lines, we have to estimate to the hundredth spot. Very good. Okay, so which ruler of the three is most accurate? I want you to write down your prediction on your PowerPoint. So Fu, what do you think? Which ruler is most accurate? Well, ruler number one was horrible because it went up by tens. Uh, ruler number two was better because it went up by ones. But I'm gonna say the most accurate one was ruler number three because every little dash represented a tenth. You got it, very good. Ruler number three has the greatest number of certain digits or like you were saying, the little marks are the smallest divisions. Very good. Why, why, why? When we make a measurement, we are communicating which numbers are certain and uncertain. When we read a measurement, we are inferring how accurate the device is based on the number of certain digits. We need to be consistent between devices and measurers. Now, if you don't estimate Whoever's reading your measurement will think that your device is less accurate than it actually is. So for example, coming back to number one, the meter stick again. 
If we just wrote 2.9, whoever's reading our actual measurement would think, wait, 2.9, the measuring device must go by ones and they estimate it to the tenths. What you really wanna communicate though is that this meter stick goes by the tenths, so we estimated the hundredths. Thus, we have to write 2.90 centimeters. Maybe it's 2.91 again, because we're estimating that last digit. Looking again at number two, the graduate cylinder, when you sort of naturally wrote 97.5, you were communicating that the smallest division is by the ones and that we were estimating the tenths. Happy, Happy measuring. measuring! Today's episode is brought to you by the law offices of Clarin Danver. We also make soap. But we never off, always zone to the break of dawn. S C I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.